हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सचिन अर्जुन गुरुड़े असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम के टी एच एम कॉलेज नासिक इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑफ सब्जेक्ट एंटेमोलॉजी फर्स्ट वी हैव लर्न द टॉपिक द एंटनी ऑफ जनरलाइज इंसेक्ट एंड इन दैट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द आर्टिकुलेशन ऑफ एंटनी एंड द मस्क्यूलेचर ऑफ एंटनी एंड द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ द मसल्स which is responsible for articulation of the antennae into the head socket or antennal sockets into the head capsule of insect now in this video we are going to learn the types of antennas in insects the antennas these are highly modified in different group of insect they possesses a taxonomic and sexual dimorphic significance in some insects particularly among the coleoptera and the diptera the taxonomic and sexual dimorphic significance is uh, means according to the which kind of antennae the present and the nature of the different segment which is contributing the antennae the insects are sometime classified into the different taxon that means that it has a taxonomic significance while the sexual dimorphic significance is known as in different sexes for example if you see the mosquito male contains a different type of antennae and female contains a different type of antennae whenever the different type of antennae or variation among the segments of antennae can be found in a sex wise at that time it can be uh, referred as the sexual dimorphic significance so in this way the antennae is the crucial part of the head of an insect it is a well known sensory organ of the insect and it has a different kinds of the forms now these antennae they are classified into the different types and there are about 13 different types of antennae can be recognized so let's see one by one first of all the cetaceous antennae now in the cetaceous antennae the flagellum is look like a bristle due to the gradual reduction in size of the segment if you see this diagram obviously antennae broadly categorized into the three division scape pedicel and the flagellum so this is the basal segment or the antennal socket we can say so this one is the scape then second one is a pedicel and the remaining one is the flagellum so here in case of this cetaceous antennae there is a gradual reduction in the size of the segments and due to the reduction in size the whole antennae can be looks like a bristle here in this diagram you can see the whole antennae having the less number of uh, antennal segment particularly into the flagellum and moreover it has a reduced size and so that the whole antennae can be looks like a bristle and this kind of the antennae is referred as the cetaceous antennae now this cetaceous antennae is a characteristic of the odonots that is they are generally found into the insect like a dragonfly so here in this diagram you can see so this is a dragonfly and this is the a magnified photograph of the head of the dragonfly and here exactly here you can see the clypeal region and this one are the bristle like antennae and this bristle like antennae are referred as the cetaceous antennae so this is about first type then second one is a filiform antennae here the flagellum is appears like a thread like structure and this flagellum is made up of uniformly thin segments or there are many segments which are contributing formation of the flagellum if such a kind of the nature of the antennae can be seen into the insect such a kind of antennae is referred as the filiform antennae again it also has the basal segment known as a scape second segment known as a pedicel and then after the flagellum is made up of many uniform Uh, uniformly thin segment and there are large number of segment which are found into the that flagellum part and if such a kind of the antennae is there this antennae is referred as the filiform antennae 
example there are many insect which shows a presence of such a kind of the filiform antennae but it is well evident or well marked into the cockroaches which are belongs to the family blatidae so this is about filiform antennae the next one is a monaliform in the monaliform antennae the flagellum is composed of the globo shaped segment and these globos like segment providing beaded or necklace like appearance to the whole antennae so if you see the necklace the usually the ladies used to wear it consists of n number of beads and that number of beads are attached or entangled with one another forming a whole a necklace such a kind of the appearance into the segments of the flagellum can be seen in this kind of the antennae so all these are the small beads which are looking very similar to one another and their arrangement is a globo shaped segment and they are uh, arranged one over the other like uh, that of the beads of the necklace and this kind of antennae is referred as the monoliform antennae so this is a very beautiful antennae in appearance again it also has the same segmentation basal one is a scape then pedicel only the flagellum is having a globo shaped segment and this kind of antennae is found into the termites and the callotrim so so this is the callotrim and the termite here in this diagram you can see the flagellar segment and there appears as a globo shape and they are giving the appearance of the necklace shape so this is the monaliform antennae then fourth antennae is referred as the serrate antennae now in the serrate antennae flagellum consists of a triangular segment with eccentric arrangement leaving a free end of the segment freely on one side which appears to be the teeth of the saw now first of all characteristic feature of this antennae again the basal segment is a scape and the second one is a pedicel but if you see the segments of the flagellum these are somewhat triangular in shape but these segments are having the eccentric arrangement eccentric means they are not evenly placed or they having a one larger angle and another one is a smaller angle so one lobe of the segment of the flagellar uh, um, flagellum is becomes uh, or comes out and here in this uh, diagram you can see so it is giving a teeth of the saw like appearance here you can see so all these are the triangular segment having the eccentric position and the antennae is giving a appearance like that of the teeth of the saw and this kind of the antennae is referred as the serrate antennae because of having such a kind of the serration so this kind of the antennae is found into the coleopteran insect for example the buprestid beetle belongs to the family buprestidae and the another family elatridae both these families are belongs to the order coleoptera so this coleopteran insect particularly these two family buprestidae and elatridae these they are provided with a serrate kind of the antennae the next one is a pectinate antennae this pectinate antennae is also referred as the flabellate antennae now in this type of antennae the individual segments of the flagellum are exceedingly exceeding on one only side of the long processes thus antennae becomes a comb like okay so the flagellar segments they are having a extension on just one side and due to the having one side appearance the whole appearance of the antennae is like that of the comb and such a kind of the antennae is referred as the pectinate antennae this pectinate antennae is very common among the lepidopteran insect belongs to the family spingidae and other families also they are showing the presence of such a kind of the pectinate antennae then bombico idea is there then another family belongs to the coleoptera that is rife floridi they are also shows a pectinate or the flabellate antennae now similar kind of the arrangement if so this pectin is present at a single side this is referred as a monopectinate antennae so in this slide whatever diagrams you are uh, seeing all these are belongs to the 
unipectinate or the monopectinate kind of the antennae. But the second type is a bipectinate also, which is the subtype of that pectinate or flabellate antennae, where the flagellar segment has the extension at the both the side. And if the extensions are at both the side, then such a kind of the antennae is referred as the bipectinate, bi in the sense two, and there are two pectins on either side, one at right and one at left. Hence, it is referred as bipectinate antennae and is a characteristic of the moths belongs to the family Euproptidae and the Lamentini. So, overall appearance of this family, uh, this antennae is very beautiful one and particularly the males of male moths belongs to that Euproptidae and Lamentini family. They are provided with a such a kind of the bipectinate antennae which are provided with a very powerful receptors which can able to recognize the pheromones which are coming or the same which are coming from the females over a long distance. So, this is a characteristic of male moths belongs to the Euproptidae and the Lamentini. So, this is about pectinate or so called as a flabellate antennae. The next one is a clavet antennae. In the clavet antennae, the successive segments of the flagellum becomes gradually broader giving an appearance of the club shaped from to the antennae. Here as you go toward the terminal or the distal portion of the antennae, the there is a gradual rise in a, a segment of the uh, flagellum and at the terminal most portion or the distal most portion it has a club shape. So, here in this diagram it is showing uh, again same one as you go at the upper end of the antennae or the distal end the broadness of the segment belongs to the flagellum is increases and at the terminal most portion or the distal most portion it becomes a completely club shape. So, this kind of the antennae can be referred as the clavet antennae and this clavet antennae is found into the cephidae family belongs to the order Coleoptera and this antennae they are very common among the butterflies belongs to the order Lepidoptera. The next one is a capitate antennae. In the capitate antennae proximal segments of the flagellum they are uniform size while the distal segments are modified into the large knob or so called as a capitulum. Here in this diagram you can see that so, the basal segment is a scape then second one is a pedicel and whatever basal segments are or proximal segments of the flagellum is there all they are somewhat uniform in size as well as shape. But at the distal portion of the flagellar uh, segment they are modified into the large knob or somewhat capitulum like structure and due to the presence of such a kind of the capitulum this antennae is referred as the capitate antennae. In this diagram again you can see the same kind of the structure or even in this diagram also the escape is there then pedicel is there then basal flagellar segments they are having a uniform size. But if you see the distal segment distal segments are somewhat modified and into the large knob or so called as the capitulum and due to the presence of such a kind of the capitulum this antennae is referred as the capitate antennae. Now, this capitate antennae is found into the insects belongs to the order Coleoptera pertaining to the family Nitididulidae. Uh, so, these are the capitate antennae. The next one is a lamellate antennae. In the lamellate antennae, the terminal segments of the flagellum are modified into the leaf like broad plates forming a foliate capitulum means in the capitate antennae as well as flamellate antennae you will found the presence of the capitulum at the distal most portion or the terminal post most portion of the flagellum. But difference is that the in the capitulate antennae that capitulum or um, capitulum is a large or the knob like and here the if you see the terminal portion of the flagellum there is also a capitulum, but this capitulum is like a leaf like or it is also referred as a foliate capitulum. So, this due to the presence of such a kind of the foliate capitulum is or it representing a somewhat lamellae hence such a kind of the antennae are referred as the lamellate antennae. So, in this board diagram you can see the basal segment is a scape then second one is a pedicel then these are the 
um, proximal segment which are having a uniform size and the shape but the distal most segments of the flagellum they are giving out, out into the leaf like fashion forming a somewhat lamellae and hence such a antennae is referred as the lamellate antennae. The example it is found into the insect belongs to the scarabidae family and the melolantha which is the common genus belongs to the family scarabidae the it represent a such a kind of the lamellate antennae. These insects are belongs to the order again coleoptera. So, this is about lamellate antennae. The next one is a geniculate antennae. In the geniculate antennae, the whole antennae are bent completely from the scape pedicel joint. So, this is a scape and this one is a pedicel from that region, this antennae is completely bent. If you found a such a kind of the bent antennae or there is an angle between the scape and in between the scape pedicel, such a kind of the antennae can be referred as the geniculate antennae and this geniculate antennae can be found into the chalcid flies. Okay, belongs to the uh, chalcido idea or the they are also found into the acromyomyx genus which is belongs to the formicidae family. So, this is about geniculate antennae. The next one is a plumose antennae. In the plumose antennae flagellum is composed of large number of cylindrical segments and these segments are provided with a long hairs on the either side. So, here you can see again the basal is a scape then is a pedicel and these are the number of flagellar segment and these flagellar segments are a cylindrical one somewhat cylindrical and these cylindrical segments at the either side they contains a long hairs on the both the side. If the long hairs are present on the cylindrical segments of the flagellum whatever antennae which is get formed this is referred as the plumose antennae and the plumose antennae is the characteristic of the male mosquito and the meges belongs to the uh, order diptera ok. So, these are the characteristic of male antennae means here the plumose antennae has a sexual dimorphic significance being is only found into the male mosquito while female mosquito contains a other kind of the antennae. So, this is about the plumose antennae. The next one is the pillows antennae. In the pillows antennae flagellum looks like a shaft flexible hair all the segments are alike fine and tubular but without any kind of the process means there is no process on the segments of the flagellum and this kind of the antennae is referred as the pillows antennae and this pillows antennae is found into the female mosquitoes and the another bugs are there that is Nicias is the genus which shows a presence of such a kind of the pillows antennae. So, this is about pillows antennae. The next one is the aristate antennae. In the aristate antennae the flagellum is undivided means this is a scape, this one is a pedicel and third one is a flagellar segment. Usually flagellum is consist of the multiple segments, but here it is completely unsegmented or undivided and it is situated at a different angle on the first segment and the antenna becomes a pedant rather than usually a porect, porect in the sense straight ok, but it do not having a straight orientation, but it is somewhat pedant or it is hanging uh, on the head. So, in this diagram you can see the position of the antennae. The arista is developed on the third segment. So, this is the arista which is present on the third segment that is first segment of the flagellum. <coughs> The arista may be bare or may be hairy, bare in the sense if there is no processes on the bristle of the that um, arista at that time that arista can be referred as the bare and here in this diagram you can see the hairs present on both the side which is referred as the hairy arista. So, due to the presence of arista this antennae is referred as the aristate antennae and is a characteristic feature of the house flies belongs to the again order diptera. And so, this is about aristate antennae and the last type is referred as the stellate antennae. In the stellate antennae three segmented antennae and third segment divides repeatedly 
and thus become falsely multi-segmented after forming a stilets. So, here the basal segment is again the scape, second segment is a pedicel and third one is a flagellum. As like that of the Aristide antennae here also the flagellum is undivided, but at the one portion of the flagellum at one end the flagellum is looks like a falsely segmented, but actually these are not segmented or not having the multi segment uh, segmented nature and these kind of the antennae they are forming a somewhat stilet like structure and which is useful for um, piercing a wound of the animal and this kind of the antennae can be found into the some predatory insect like that of the tabanus genus which is referred as the horse fly belongs to the order diptera. So, in this way the different insect belongs to the different order or the family they are characterized by having a different kinds of the antennae according to their need, but the basic function of the antennae is same in all insect is a tactile in function or is a main sensory organ or the primary sensory organ among the insects. So, this is about the different types of antennae. Then next topic that is the sensilla on the antennae. Now, these antennae are primarily the sensory structures and they are richly supplied with the sensilla in most of the insects. Means there are many sensilla which are resides at the different portion of the antennae. Some of the sensilla they are located on the basal segment scape, some sensilla uh, located on the pedicel and even in some cases it is also present on the flagellum. So, it is a characteristic of insect that the pedicel contains the chordonotal organs. These chordonotal organs are also referred as the Johnson organs which respond to the movement of the flagellum with respect to the pedicel. Means, what kind of the uh, movement is going to form in between the flagellum with respect to the pedicel such a kind of the information is given by this quadronotal or the Johnson organ to the insects. Now, in addition the scape and pedicel often have a hair plates and a group of form sensilla and this sensilla provides a information on the position of the basal segments with respect to the head as well as each other. Means, on what direction the antennae is placed on the head of an insect such a kind of the information can be given by the sensilla which is located on the scape and the pedicel of the antennae. Then scattered mechanoreceptor mechanosensory hairs are also often present on this segment. The principal sensilla on the flagellum of most of the insect are olfactory in nature and these have a variety of forms in a different insect. It is common for contact chemoreceptors that is reception of the different kinds of the chemicals for example, pheromones. Then it is also useful used as a mechanoreceptor which is mechanically if the air is receiving on the, uh, the head of insect it gives a such a kind of the sensation. And third one is a thermohygroreceptor which detects a humidity and the temperature. So, such a kind of the uh, receptors are present on the antennae where the flagellum is made of a series of similar annuli. Successive annuli often have a similar kind of the arrangement of the sensilla, but the sensilla are often concentrated in a particular region of the antennae of an insect. So, overall the antennae they are always provided with a some sort of the sensilla which receive a different kind of the stimulus which may be in the form of chemical, mechanical or uh, thermal stimulus. So, and accordingly this sensilla gives the information about that particular information to the insects. So, this is about the topic that is sensilla on the antennae and the last one is the functions of antennae. Now, the antennae functions primarily as a sense organ and they are primary olfactory receptors of all the insects and they are acting as a primary sense organ. So, they also have a tactile function 
by virtue of a large number of mechanosensitive sensilla which are resides on the antennae. For example, a very long antennae such as occurs in a cockroach are possibly associated with their use as a fillers which gives them a sense of touch. Then the Johnson organ is an important in the regulation of the air speed in uh, some flying insects and in some insect male mosquito, female drosophila and the workers of honeybee ex ex uh, these are the example it is concerned in the perception of near field sounds means sometimes in some cases the antennae they are also having the function of perception of the some kind of the sounds into the nearby surroundings. Now sometimes antennae have an other functions or it contributes the function rather than the sensation. For example, the adult water beetle whose name is a hydrophilus is a genus which submerges with a film of air over its ventral surface which it renews at a interval when it comes to the surface of the water. So, in this way these antenna are responsible for holding the air and this air is drawn at the ventral side and so that that air bubble is get communicated with their spiracle and is a mode of respiration among these water diving insects. So, this is another function than that of the sensilla that is it helps or assist in the process of respiration when it dives into the water. At the water surface, body is inclined to one side and the funnel of air connecting the ventral air bubble to the outer air appears between the head and prothorax and distal annuli of the antenna which is held along the side of the head and then this bubble is shifted to the abdominal side and making a communication with the with the that spiracle so that this insect can uh, take a air from which is trapped into that air bubble and dives into the water. So, this is the another function which contributed by the antenna. Again in some insects for example, in fleas and the columbella the antennas are useful for the purpose of mating. For example, the male fleas use these antennae to clasp the female from below and the inner surfaces which bears a large number of adhesive disc. So, that with the help of this adhesive disc male can able to hold the female during the coitus or during the copulation and this is again another function which is contributed by the antennae for a some insect like fleas and the columbella. So, in this way antennae these are the important organs of the insect which is primarily built for the sensation that is the olfactory reception and in the sec uh, in secondarily it may develop a uh, or secondarily it may contribute the different functions as well. So, this is about the today's topic that is types of antennae, sensilla of antennae and the functions of antennae. Thank you, thank you very much.